What is up, everybody? Joseph Hadaway here. So, we're basically two full months through 2023 already, somehow. Well, let's go ahead and call it. It's basically March 1st. So, if you had financial goals that you were trying to work on during 2023, how's it going? Have you, are you doing good? Have you started yet? Well, the good news is if you fall in the ladder camp of that and you haven't started yet, it's not too late. And I know you can make the argument you have until December 31st starting your New Year's resolutions, but if you want to be in a better financial position on January 1st, 2024 than you are today, you got to start working today. And that's why I'm making this video. In this video, we're going to discuss my top four tips for the financial move, personal financial moves you can make this year to put you in a better spot by January 1st. And before we get into it, this won't be your stereotypical live on a budget or spend less than what you earn. Great advice, phenomenal advice, timeless advice, truthfully. But in this video, I wanna discuss specifically 2023 things that you can do today that might not be available for you to do in 2024. And I guess with that said, let's get into it. All right, first up on this list is getting an HYSA or a high yield savings account. Before I get into it, let's start with the basic for anyone that doesn't know what is a high yield savings account or HYSA. A high yield savings account is a savings account that pays a higher APY than the national average. For example, a lot of your brick and mortar banks that I'm not gonna call out here paying a national average, at least here in the US, of about 0.1% APY or interest, average yield, whatever you wanna call it, on your savings account per year, and that's nothing. Comparatively, other banks, such as your Ally Bank, Discover, Capital One, and those are just some examples. Please do your research on this, and I'll link some resources in the description below. Offer savings accounts with currently at time of recording yields upwards of three and four percent, which is really good when you compare it to 0.1%. I mean, of course, it's not going to match your stock market investments, but for cash that you have on hand, that's a pretty good yield. All right. And you're probably asking yourself, you know, how are your allies, Discover's, Capital One's, et cetera, et cetera, able to offer such a high yield when your other banks are offering 0.1%? Well, if you look at, you know, Ally, Discover, I'm not going to make that list again because I've made it about four times now. They're banks that don't have any brick and mortar branches. Brick and mortar branches are expensive. I mean, they require employees, they require upkeep, they require lease payments, uh, go into that. So if you don't have these brick and mortar branches, they have, at least in theory, more cash to spend on customer perks, such as a higher yield in your savings account. And the best part of all of this is, and again, this only goes for people watching this here in the United States. I am not privy to how banking works in the EU or the UK or anything, so U.S. specifically, if you are at a bank that is FDIC insured through the federal government, every penny you have in that account is insured up to $250,000. So if you're an FDIC insured bank, which honestly you should be, I don't know why you'd use a non-FDIC insured bank, especially here in the U.S., then that 3 to 4% that you're earning is essentially risk-free. Because, I mean, even if the bank goes under or loses your money, the federal government will reimburse you. Absolutely a 4% risk-free return. Hey, that's pretty good. All right. And I've put her to sleep with this video. That probably means good things for my channel. Yeah, she is... I don't know if you can see her, but she is back there and she is out. So now we get into what would you hold all of this cash on hand for? Well, typically anything you would invest for. I mean, your emergency fund... Uh, any cash expenses like a vacation or a down payment on a home that you foresee coming in the next year or two that it's not worth putting the time in the market. Any short-term expenses that you see coming in the near future that you don't have the proper time horizon to put the money into the market. So by putting your extra cash into these HYSAs, I mean, you're getting a risk-free yield that is significantly higher than the national average in a bank. It, it seems like a no-brainer. I mean, imagine you have your emergency fund sitting there, three to six months expenses, earning 4% a year, risk-free, no strings attached. That sounds pretty nice to me. All right, for number two on this list, we have investing in T-bills and I-bonds. So right now in 2023, if you are here in the US, as you probably know, Federal Reserve rates are the highest a lot of people have ever seen them in their lives. I mean, they're at like a 20, 30, maybe even 40 year record high and inflation is... Let's just say if you're watching this, you probably know how inflation is. 
And if you buy your own groceries, oh, you definitely know how inflation is. Either way, at the time of me recording this video, I-bonds are paying just shy of 7% and T-bills are paying just over 4%. And again, these are totally risk-free investments. So how are they risk-free investments? Well, they're backed up fully by the faith of the US government who has never missed a payment or defaulted on a debt ever. Real quick, if you've been watching the news lately, especially at the time I'm recording this video, and I record these usually two to three weeks in advance, give or take, you've probably seen some news about the debt ceiling being raised and the government defaulting on its debt. That's never happened before, ever. Every few years, it's a big political theater, whether we raise the debt ceiling or not. And I'm not worried about it. Both parties know for a fact it would be extremely catastrophic for the U.S. economy and just the faith in the U.S. government and the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of the world for the U.S. government to default on its debt like that. Again, I record these in advance, so I don't foresee that happening. It's this big political theater every few years. It's it's probably going to get raised. If, if this ages poorly, then, you know, when this comes out, I've probably got bigger things to worry about than this channel. So, oh well. All right, back at it. First up, you know, let's start with, you know, what are I-bonds? I-bonds are bonds issued by the U.S. government that are indexed to inflation. I could definitely go into more detail here. There are some limits, some restrictions. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but luckily I've already written a full article over at HadawayFinancial.com about I-bonds and whether or not they are right for your portfolio and whether or not you should be investing in them. So I'm just going to link that article down in the description. Number two, T-bills. Their rate on those comes the, from the U.S. Federal Reserve rates. And it's a whole formula calculation that I'm not going to get into here. But right now, rates are high. Looks like they're probably going to stay high for a little while. At least that's what the reserve is indicating. Again, this might age poorly. I can't predict the future, neither can you. So it might not be the worst investment to add to your portfolio, at least if you have some extra cash lying around that the time horizon or the risk factor of the stock market might be too much. Risk-free government bonds might be the right option for you. All right, step three, and this probably only applies if you're in the U.S. like me, student loans. It's finally time. Let's talk about it. If you haven't looked at your student loans since payments were paused back in 2020, it's time. We, we got to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it either, but we, we have to. So whether or not student loan forgiveness goes through through President Biden, student loan payments are starting back, period. At the latest in September, However, it could be earlier depending on the Supreme Court's decision. So if you know you have a balance, especially if it's more than the $10,000 or $20,000 threshold if you got a Pell Grant, you know, as well as I do, that payments are starting up again very, very soon before the end of the year. And you need to adjust your budget accordingly. At the very least, log into studentloans.gov, check your loan balance, and there are several free online calculators you can use to check what your expected payment will be. It may not be 100% accurate, of course, that'll come down to your student loan servicer, but you need to add it to your budget, you need to get ready for it, that way you're not caught completely off guard when as long as you have an extra payment that you weren't ready for. Last thing on this list, and that's talk to me. Uh, I started this channel, I started this whole brand because I have several years working as a financial coach aiding individual clients, creating a budget, creating a debt payoff plan, creating savings, starting to invest. Obviously cannot recommend investment products and I do not do that. Talk to a financial advisor for that. But if you need help just managing your cash flow, your inflows and your outflows, I'm your guy. I recently just launched a new site with the help of my friends over at Energize Liverpool. Shout out to Harvey. I love what they've done. I cannot recommend them enough. Uh, if you would like to work with them, they gave me a quick referral link link down in the description but seriously i want to get back on coaching pretty hard i only charge 25 dollars for a half hour which you may be asking yourself hey how does he make money off of that when other financial coaches sometimes charge upwards of 200 dollars an hour the answer is i really don't at all i mean after service fees i net 20 dollars for the half hour session assuming we even end at half an hour but i'm going to say this and i'm always going to say this i am here for a purpose not for a profit. Your first session's free, and if you have trouble paying the 25, contact me, we will absolutely work something out, usually in the form of another free session as well. If you have money questions or you just want someone to talk to you about your budget, I'm your guy. Send me an email, jhadawayfc at gmail.com. 
Look in the description for that too, or send me a DM, Twitter, Instagram. I want to help you with your money. All right, and those are my four steps that I feel anyone can take to get in a better financial position by January 1st, 2024. Anything you might add to the list? Let me know down in the comments. So, you know, what, what do you think we should add? How can we help people? How can anyone, I mean, absolutely everyone get on a better financial standing? Because that's what we're here for. And we're gonna definitely gonna go ahead and call the video there. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel if you want more personal finance side hustle content. Give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you all next week.